So in this first example, we'll set up the uh, the start screen with the uh, slide layers. We're just going to use the built-in properties within Storyline and create this start menu right here that uh, when we preview it, again, we're going to see the category choices. We can choose any one of these and then we'll return back to the uh, the slide layer. So that layer with the choices is right underneath this. Um, what we see here is this, this dark rectangle. Everything is right below it, the, the, the three categories we just saw. Close the close button, click the close button, and now we see that we have a, a change in state. Come back over here and make one more choice, close it, and so on. So a couple things here though, let's go ahead and close out. Here's all we're doing with this. Real simple to do because Storyline actually takes uh, a big part of that uh, uh, load or that workload off of us and just uses built-in properties. So if I bring open my timeline right here, we can see that we have the, uh, the category. Um, it's just called question one here in the timeline. Now, if I look over here in the uh, slide, uh, the triggers, I can see that I'm added a trigger for each of these that just says, when you click it, show layer one, and when you click that object, right? So question one layer, question two layer, and each of these obviously aligns with the, uh, the naming that we have in the timeline, right? Question one, and there's question one down there. All right, let's go and cancel. So I'm just showing one of these three slide layers for each of those buttons. Now, the magic happens here really is uh, when the object is clicked. If I click the States tab, you see that we have this, uh, this state right here called Visited. This is all built into Storyline. If I click Edit real quick, and I'm just going to delete this, just going to get rid of the one that I set up. So by default, we have the Normal and the Hover, right? You can see the change in state when we mouse over uh, this object, we'll see the hover state. Well, we want to add a new state that shows something's been visited. That really means as soon as you click something, that object is visited. And from the drop down menu right here, you'll actually see that visited is a built in state. That just means that it has some additional properties that Storyline manages for us. We don't have to program and tell this button object to show a different state when it's visited. When you click something, it's visited, right? So that's going to register. Uh, Storyline is going to register that for us. So click Add, and I can just change the color right here a little bit just to make it lighter, right? So there we go, right? There's our normal state. This is when the game starts. You roll over one of these, right? And the mouse is hovered over, and you'll see that change, and then you'll see the visited change. So that's how we set that up. Now, there is sort of one problem here that may or may not be a problem for you. Let me preview this real quick and show you. We already saw that as I, as I click, after I click each of these, I get that visited state, right? But check it out. If I mouse back over, I still have an active category. So that may not be what you want. You may just want the, you may want the visual representation um, of that visited state, but you still want the learner to be able to go back and maybe review or uh, still retake that question. Most times you probably don't want them to click it. It wants to be, it want, you want to have something that looks like this, but there's no way to interact with it. If that's the case, then we need to add a disabled state. Now, just like the visited state, uh, disabled is a built-in state. So I'll click Edit States. I'm going to reuse the same one. I'm actually going to remove the points just to get those out of there. But there's my shape. I'm going to duplicate it this time. I could create a new one, but in this case, I'm just going to duplicate the same properties uh, that we already have for this visited state. But rather than use a visited, right? This time we're going to use a disabled. Now disabled means it's turned off. It's just going to act like a shape because right now these are acting like a button, right? Because we have a trigger to it. We have hover states to it. Everything that this button or object is doing is acting like a button. Well, we want to turn that button off and that's really what the disabled state does. So I, I kind of want these in this case to look the same. You could obviously customize the disabled state and do different things with it. But now when I return, going to need to add an extra trigger, right? Because disabled doesn't automatically happen. Visited automatically happens after you click an object. So in my triggers, I'm going to add one new one. And I'm going to change the state of my question one to disabled when the user clicks. And I'll click OK. Now we have two triggers right here. So if I preview the slide one more time, make my choice view the layer, and now when I come back, I can't click, right? I can mouse over this. And I would just need to set up those additional triggers for the remaining two categories.